Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this uh, Monday. Hope everybody's having a great day and had a great weekend. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Uh, do please, if you would, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. Just hit the subscribe button and you will be notified every time a new video goes up. I usually do at least one video a day. And time permitting, I sometimes will do two videos a day in storm situations mostly. And if you are a regular on my YouTube channel, a big hello. A big, I know I have some followers up in, uh, in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. Um, a man by the name of Austin told me, I sorry, I forgot to make a note of his last name. You got to understand, I just had a birthday. I'm almost 60. I forget things. Okay. Uh, but a shout out to you and uh, thank you for being here. So again, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. If you're, you're coming, if you come back on a regular basis and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Okay. So we had our first clipper uh, this morning go by and, and it produced a couple of inches of snow only in extreme southeastern New Jersey, around Atlantic City, down to Cape May, and into parts of Delaware, and that was that. And now the second clipper is coming along, and this one is going to affect areas a little further to the north. I have the GFS model up here, and there's a bit of a warm front that's setting up. And once again, uh, in this, in a, what we're dealing with is uh, an area of snow that's going to form ahead of that warm front, and I think it's the kind of setup that could produce a coating to a couple of inches. What will be key for the southern end of the precipitation for the coast will be the development of a wave. If the wave forms fast enough, it'll pinch off the cold, the, what, what warm air there is, which isn't a lot. But uh, you can see where the isobar is stretched out that there is a, uh, there's a wave there as the primary low here dies out and the secondary low becomes the main low. And that's going to move out to the northeast. So this is actually a pretty straightforward, uh, simple well, they're not always, they're not all simple. They're not always simple. I don't think any, any of them are simple. But this is one of the easier events to look at. Sometimes you can get surprises with warm fronts because you they'll set up with a, a narrow band of moderate to heavy snow and somebody puts down a quick couple of inches. And I think that's where this is all going to play out. In terms of the uh, specific snow forecast, this is what I'm going for, which is basically a coating to an inch north of route 195 to 78 i kind of made it a little further south just to cover okay but i think the main action is going to be north of route 78 in new jersey and in pennsylvania and you notice the slope line goes to the northwest because of how the system is tilted northwest to southeast so one to maybe some local two inch amounts in this band across north jersey northeastern pennsylvania including scranton and long island coastal connecticut south of route 15 and the lower the southern end of the hudson valley you go to northern New Jersey, north of Route 80, <clears throat> north and east of Scranton, on up through the Hudson Valley, and in Connecticut, north of, of uh, Route 15, I think there could be two or three inches, and maybe a couple of spots might wind up with a little bit more. <clears throat> so we'll take care of the clipper, and then we'll move on as it turns colder and basically dry for the rest of the week. There's a little low that goes out off the Carolinas, might produce a little light snow or flurry activity in the Carolina and Virginia mountains Friday night into Saturday. But the next main event is low pressure that it's going to be coming out of the Southwest. Now, I did a second video yesterday because I wanted to address the fact that the one of the things the European model was doing <clears throat> is that it was putting all its emphasis in the energy that's in the North. It had nothing coming out of the South. If that were to happen, it would be a simple cold front and you wind up with some rain showers probably through most of the area, snow showers and colder areas to the North. But one of the things that the GFS model has been insistent on is that it has a much more definable southern stream piece of energy. And that is going to be key to all of this. I tend to think that it is correct on this, uh, mainly because of the fact that it seems to not only have stuck with it, but now over the last couple of runs, it looks like it wants to make that southern stream a little bit more important. The, the result is that the model takes a low, a primary low, uh, into southern Ohio, and you can start to see here, this is Sunday afternoon, and the snow that breaks out ahead of it, but you can start to see here that we have a snaking warm front, and there's a, going to be a secondary low that's going to try and start out off the Carolina coast and move to the northeast. And indeed, uh, when you move just as Monday evening, that secondary low is there. Now, this is very important because it, the second, the formation of the secondary low will limit how far north warm air 
moves up the coast. Up until Monday evening, it looks like snow develops, I'm sorry, Sunday evening, snow develops Sunday afternoon, and it's snowing from Washington, D.C., Baltimore through New Jersey, uh, and into Long Island, and just getting into southern New England. Um, now, if that secondary low develops fast enough, it cuts the warm air off, and by uh, 1 a.m. Monday, you have one you have a well-developed low now east of New Jersey. The rain snow line is just about to New York City, uh, not quite to Philadelphia. You've got sleet and freezing <coughs> freezing rain going down into northern Virginia. Uh, so that's telling me that the model wants to make the secondary low more important. The faster it develops, the, uh, the better the chances of warm air being completely cut off and that it would be mostly snow for the coast. So... Um, the, the the primary secondary situation is is huge in an instance like this. So the low then moves out, and there's another one right behind it uh, that the model develops in the Gulf of Mexico and takes uh, up just off the East Coast for later next week. So you know I'm looking at the upper air. I think that actually does make a lot of sense. Now uh, let's look at the upper air itself because this is where Everything is going to be dictated in terms of uh, how this uh, comes out. So I'll, I will widen this because we need to see the wider region. And by the way, this is the new GFS today that we're looking at. So let's back up here. So here we are uh, at the beginning of this week. You know, you've got this cold flow out of Canada. Uh, the air is getting colder, relatively speaking. It's not overly cold because of the issues that we've been talking about. Uh, for quite a while with regards to how cold it isn't in Canada. But uh, now as we move over time, we're going into the weekend. Now here's the, here we begin setting up for the uh, weather system. There's our southern stream shortwave. There's our northern stream shortwave. And here we have our flow from the Pacific. You have cold air that's into the northeast. So, you know, all the ingredients seem to be in the right place. And then as we go forward, you can see, you can still see there's a definable uh, trough right in here. That has to be the case because if it's not, then it's all in the north. Then you're not going to have what the model showed you. You're going to have a low in the north that's going to intensify with a cold front on it and some showers. So this is the part that's really important that that southern stream um, remain uh, intact. And the other thing is when we see how what when we see the shape of the trough as we go toward the east okay it's very broad okay it's not a v shape it it's 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 this very broad um look to it okay and that uh that also very important because as long as it stays broad if it gets too sharp then you're going to wind up with a secondary that develops if you get a sharp trough you get a secondary that develops that it becomes a coast hugger, and that brings in the warm air much further inland. As long as the, there is this other short wave that's right behind it, that's going to prevent this trough from getting too deep. So I think the setup that in the end, this is all going to wind up becoming being a moderate snowfall. I don't think this is going to be a major snowfall. This is going to be a moderate snow event. And then as we move through time, uh, you also see that next trough that's right behind it. It's right in here. So it's it, it's it's all. It all seems to make sense that there could be a second event behind it. So then we're going to have to deal with the problems of, 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 um, of, of what that entails. But you know what? First things first, I always believe in dealing with one thing at a time. And by the way, we are out 10 days here in the long range. And at least through day 10, one of the things that um, I'm seeing right off the bat is, you know, there's a blocking high that's building over Greenland. Uh, you do have this flow over Canada. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, start to see uh, an upper low of, that's moving into Alaska. So we're going to have to see what winds up with that. Does it wind up driving southward? And we also have a ridge up in the west. So the signature, at least through day 10, still remains uh, it uh, being a, um, a, 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 a an active pattern uh, and a pattern that may be cold enough for snow events as we move through the first part of the month of February. Uh, at least that's what uh, the models are telling us. Okay, so let me let me not hit the wrong button so I don't accidentally stop this uh, and, and have to start all over again. 
I want to show you the European because again because because of that, dealing with that issue of the northern stream and we only have it um, we only can see it in in 24 hour increments but if you look at the European Saturday night it's there it's there is a southern stream system but it's very very hard to find and when you look at um, Sunday night it really is just one northern stream system so this is imp this is the key my own feeling I will say again I think the GFS probably has the better idea uh, with the southern stream system being there uh, I think the European may be wrong in in in, in uh, just putting all its eggs in the northern basket uh, so uh, we'll see what the day run brings the 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 the, the night run, this night run, had a little bit more of a southern stream feature than the prior run did, which had no southern stream feature at all. So it seems to be going in the right direction. And also out by day 10, you have, you know, some semblance of blocking. It has a different profile over Alaska and, and up in, in, into um, the eastern part of Russia and Siberia. Um, you know, so so we're going to have to see if this is right. The European has not done well this winter. It just has not performed well at all. So um, I, I think I'm going to probably want to favor the GFS model. And frankly, from a forecasting perspective, that makes the most sense. How about we take a look at the ever popular um, snowfall forecasts, if, if this will let me. Oh, it's not letting me. Why is it not letting me? That's not being very nice. Oh, I know why. I have to remember. <laughs> there are no snowfall forecasts for the uh, the European. So we can't have... Oh, am I having technical issues right now? <laughs> All right, so let's go to the GFS. There we go. And let's see what the GFS is doing in terms of snowfall. And we'll do the 24 hour. Oh, get the tight region. So, this would be the GFS's solution, which does include the fact that I apologize, I'm just having, not having a good sequence here. Um, this is going to show the. Um, snowfall in 24 hour increments so that we can separate out all the other events that are going on in the ten, in the 10 day period so it basically has you know a stripe of what looks like in the purplish area of three to six inches running up and down the coast and again this is probably because of the fact that how it redevelops the coastal low and it does say it changes to rain over long island new york city and along the immediate coast and stays mostly snow inland I, again, I this I don't see this being becoming anything other than a moderate event. Maybe if everything works out in terms of um, uh, cold air, it could be a th three to six, four to eight type event. I, you know, hard to say. Still way too early in the game. And I show this to you, by the way, because of the fact that these maps are in the public domain. So um, anybody can pull them up, but I want to at least give you the context that we are a week away so there is not really a lot of value in looking at this in terms of absolute specifics because of the fact that we are indeed over a week away but at least you know you have some you know you kind of i think everybody who's on here sort of ha under you know has an understanding that this is how uh, it all works out so uh let's see what the clipper brings us just once again to review uh talking about a coating to a couple of inches uh, from uh, the central part of New Jersey on northward into the Hudson Valley, northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, Connecticut, Long Island, and so on. So um, this is going to be a fast shot. It'll be uh, done before too long. And then we start to look ahead toward the weekend. Uh, check out latest posts this afternoon. I'll be posting some more model discussions on the uh, upcoming uh, uh, weekend system as well as the one for tomorrow on meteorologistjochaffee.com. Download my app and subscribe to my forecast. The link will come up right here on the video in just a couple of seconds. Uh, the uh, app is free, and uh, the subscription forecast subscription is just 99 cents a month, and it covers New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. And if you've stuck through this almost 15-minute video, I assume that you like it. 
So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is absolutely free. Just click on the subscribe button on the channel page here and you'll get notified every time a new video comes up. Everybody enjoy the rest of your Monday. Be safe and we will uh, see you tomorrow.